Welcome to Congregation at Chaim's Rosh Hashanah Family Service. Today we're going to learn everything there is to know about Rosh Hashanah and we're going to welcome the Jewish New Year together. Will you come with me? We're going on a trip in my favorite rocket ship. Where are we going? To the world of Congregation Etz Chaim's Rosh Hashanah Family Service, a service that has never been done before and it's going to be out of this world. Join me. Well, the first thing you have to know about Rosh Hashanah is today we are celebrating the birthday of the world. And according to the Jewish calendar, this year, the world turns 5,781 years old today. Hooray! I have the whole world in my hands. All right, that's enough dancing and singing. Let's get down to storytelling. So we're gonna bake a cake today. We're getting the cake and we're getting it for the world because we're celebrating the birthday of the world. Happy birthday, world. We're so happy that you're with us and we want to take care of you. We eat apples dipped in honey and we say thank you, God, for letting us have this wonderful experience of living on your earth. So I'm standing there and I'm dancing and I'm singing, thank you, God. And we're waiting for the cake to come down. And while we're waiting for the cake to come down, let's sing. Avinu Malkeinu, Avinu Malkeinu, Avinu Malkeinu, Avinu Malkeinu. Oh, got the cake. All right, now we have to put it into the shaping station. And so, while we're shaping our cake, let's go on talking about Rosh Hashanah. On Rosh Hashanah, we do three things. Tefillah, which means to pray. Teshuvah which means to return or to ask forgiveness from people that we've harmed. And tzedakah, which means we give to charity, but it also means we try to become kinder people. Now I'm looking for a place to drop my dessert. I'm going to put it into the edible candles area because on Rosh Hashanah, like on every Jewish holiday, we begin our holiday by lighting candles. Okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about prayer. How do we pray on Rosh Hashanah? Many people in our family have done things that we're proud of. They were brave and faithful, kind and patient. And so we remember all the people in our family just as God remembers us, especially on Rosh Hashanah. In fact, it was said that God remembered all of God's people. Like when Joseph was in jail, after he had gotten into jail during Potiphar's time. If you don't know that story, come see the rabbi. I'll tell you the story. God also remembered Sarah and Rachel when they couldn't have children. It is said that on Rosh Hashanah, that's the time. That's why we read the story about Sarah and Rachel and even Hannah, because Hannah too couldn't have a baby. And so we read the Haftorah about how God remembered her as well. All right, it's time for us to get this cake. We got the cake. Life is good. Apple 
apples and honey. You can go and ask the rabbi, 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 why we bid the old year goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. We start a new year, but so far we that it's the first day Father, Mother Apples and honey It may sound funny You can make the New Year sweet and sunny Eating apples and honey In a great oak forest, where the trees grew tall and majestic, there was a little apple tree. It was the only apple tree in that forest, and so it stood alone. Winter came, and as the snow fell to the forest floor, it covered the branches of the little apple tree. The forest was quiet and peaceful. One night, the little apple tree looked up at the sky and saw a wonderful sight. Between the branches of all the trees, the little apple tree saw the stars in the sky, which appeared to be hanging on the branches of the oak tree. Oh God, oh God, whispered the little apple tree. How lucky those oak trees are to have such beautiful stars hanging on their branches. I want more than anything in the world to have stars on my branches, just like the oak trees have. Then I would feel truly special. Well, God looked down at the little apple tree and said gently, have patience, have patience, little apple tree. Time passed, the snow melted, and spring came to the land. Tiny white and pink blossoms appeared on the branches of the little apple tree. Birds came to rest on its branches, and people walked by the little apple tree and admired its beautiful blossoms. All summer long, the apple tree continued to grow. The branches of the tree formed a canopy overhead as they filled with leaves and blossoms. But night after night, the little apple tree looked up at the sky with millions and millions of stars and cried out, Oh God, I want more than anything in the world to have stars in my tree and on my branches and on my leaves, just like those oak trees. And God looked down at the little apple tree and said, you already have gifts. Isn't it enough to have shade to offer people and fragrant blossoms and branches on which the birds can rest so they can sing you their songs? <sighs> the apple tree sighed and answered simply, Dear God, I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but that is not special enough. I do appreciate how much pleasure I give to others, but what I really want more than anything in the world is to have stars, not blossoms on my branches. Then I would feel truly special. God smiled and answered, Be patient, little apple tree. The seasons changed again and soon the apple tree was filled with many beautiful apples. People walked in the forest and whoever saw the apple tree would reach up, pick an apple, and eat it. And still, when the night came to the forest, the apple tree looked at the stars and the oak tree and called out, Oh God, I want more than anything in the world to have stars on my branches. Then I would feel truly special. 
And God asked, but apple tree, isn't it enough that you now have such wonderful apples to offer people? Doesn't that satisfy you? Doesn't that give you enough pleasure and make you feel special? Without saying a word, the apple answered by shaking its branches from side to side. At that, God caused the wind to blow. The great oak trees began to sway and the apple tree began to shake. And from the top of the apple tree, an apple fell. And when it hit the ground, it split open. Look, commanded God, look inside yourself. What do you see? The little apple tree looked down and saw that right in the middle of the apple was a star. And the apple tree answered, a star, I have a star. So you do have stars on your branches. They've been there all along. You just didn't know it. You see, usually when we cut an apple, we cut it by holding the apple with its stem up. But in order to find the star, we have to turn it on its side. And that teaches us that sometimes if we change our direction a little bit, we too can find the spark that ignites the star inside each of us. The stars are right there within each one of us. Look carefully, look carefully, and you'll find that beautiful star inside. We need to look inside ourselves and reach for that star within. Look, it's Naomi Friedman. She's going to bake challah for us. Why do we eat challah not only on Shabbat, but also on Rosh Hashanah? Because bread is so delicious and we can dip it in honey. Just as we dip the apple in the honey, we can dip the challah in the honey. Right, Naomi? So right now she's kneading it and she's making it all wonderful. She's putting it in the flour, but now I want to talk about how wonderful bread is while she adds some olive oil to make it easier, I guess, to spread around. So it's not, it's not olive oil, it's probably just regular oil. Oh, she has, she has towels that go for the new year and she's letting the bread rise. She's even heating it a little bit so that it rises quickly so that she is going to punch it back down and make it easier to make the braids that will make up the round challah. See, most of the time challah is just a loaf and it's long and straight, but on Rosh Hashanah and on Yom Kippur, we make our challah round like the globe. See, the world is round, the challah is round, the apple is round, the year is round. It looks like a calendar straight line, but really we cycle back every year to this place and we come back together as a community for Rosh Hashanah and we ask God for another year of wonderful things. In fact, sometimes we feel like God is a parent, like a mom or a dad or a king even. And so we say, Avinu Malkeinu, God hear our voice, Avinu Malkeinu make an end to sickness, war, and hunger. And we sure have known a little bit of sickness this year with this crazy coronavirus, right? Avinu Malkeinu, may this new year be a good one. Avinu Malkeinu, fill our hands with your blessing, just as Naomi's hands are filled with bread, which is kind of like a blessing because we're gonna soon get to eat it. And it's so yummy. Naomi, you're doing such a great job. So we have the tefillah, the prayer, Avinu Malkeinu, which we ask God to be gracious to us, to be nice to us, and to answer our prayer. Because maybe we haven't done enough good deeds this year. Maybe we haven't given enough sadaka or given enough of ourselves. And so we ask that God be kind to us and generous to us. And then we say a blessing, which blesses all of our children. And while Naomi gets the Chala, ready to be braided. I'm going to bless you, so lean your head forward. Yivarecha chadonai v'yishmarecha. 
May God bless you and keep you. Ya'er Adonai panave lecha v'yichunecha. May God be kind and gracious unto you. Yisa Adonai panave lecha v'yasem lecha shalom. May God's countenance be lifted up unto you and grant you the most precious gift of peace. Amen. So we continue with our prayer. We then get to the part about hearing the shofar. And just as Naomi is braiding the challah, which kind of looks like a shofar as it, she makes it long and it kind of curves a little bit, the shofar is a very loud instrument. It makes a cool sound that kind of wakes you up in your kishkas. It wakes you up from the inside out and says, wake up, listen. We have to remember that this is a very holy and special time. We have to listen to the voice that is telling us what is right, to go do something nice for somebody else, to stop hitting our brother and sister, to take the garbage out when our parents ask us to, to be loving to our dog or to our cat. That is what the shofar reminds us of. And so we blow the shofar so we can hear the message. It is not enough just to hear the shofar, but you really have to understand why you're blowing the shofar. And so we always come back on Rosh Hashanah and then later on Yom Kippur to hear the sound of the shofar. Look at Naomi, how she's braiding her challah. She's really amazing. So there, she is making it so fascinating. I'm very impressed with her, actually, that she's making all these different braids. I don't even understand how she's braiding, but she's doing, doing a great job. All right, let's talk a little bit about teshuvah. Teshuvah means three things. It means saying, I'm sorry. It means making up for your mistakes. Has anyone here made a mistake? I've made a few. More than a few, actually. And teshuva means you don't repeat your mistake. Like, you can't say to your brother, I'm really sorry for hitting you, if you know you're going to hit him again tomorrow, right? Okay. So imagine that during the past year, you carried two books with you at all times. The first book wrote down inside of it all the good deeds that you've done. The second book was all the good things that you maybe didn't do such good things, like maybe you were impatient, or maybe you stepped on an ant, whatever it is. You have to remember that every deed that we do is being recorded somewhere, even if that's not true. It's kind of a cool thing to think about. And that brings me to repentance. Repentance means that we're gonna get a reward, like we're gonna get to play our video games on our iPad or our tablets. So what are we getting rewarded for? For doing good deeds or for making this incredible challah, right, Naomi? Now she's breaking some eggs, okay? The uh, chicken rewarded us with the eggs. She's mixing it up because she's going to spread it over the top of the challah. That's what she's gonna do. And so, a shofar. I don't know, but I think shofar show good. We're doing pretty well, aren't we? Okay, enough with the puns. This is a shofar, and this once was on the top of the head of a ram. There were two of them, that is, but in order to get this off the ram, yeah, we don't want to talk about what happened to the ram, but this is a shofar. On Rosh Hashanah, we blow the shofar. When we hear the sound of the shofar, it wakes us up. And if I were to blow this right now, I'd be waking up my whole family. So I'm not going to blow this. I'm also really not good at blowing it, but it makes a really cool sound. And we'll insert the sound so you can hear what it sounds like. It's a very cool ram's horn if you think about it. And if you will come with me to Israel, when you get older, you can buy one of these in Israel from the Shuk or from a wonderful, who did I buy this from? Uh, it doesn't tell me, but it's a very clear label. Okay, so the shofar 
is a call to come home. Sort of like the idea when a lifeguard blows the whistle whenever people go out too far into the water. The shofar is like the lifeguard's whistle. You see, many of us wander too far away from the shore and we're not even aware that we've done it. And so, we have to be called back home once a year by the sound of the shofar that stirs our kishkas, that stirs our inside, our soul, and makes us say, oh, maybe we're not going in the right direction. And so we listen to Tekia and we hear the sound of the shofar. <laughs> Hear the sound of the shofar to come home, to mitzvot, to doing of good deeds, which gives us life and beauty, sanctity and stability. Come home. It's time to start the new year and a new life. So we listen to the sound of the shofar and we wish each other l'shana tova tikatevu that we will be written and sealed for a good year. L'shana tova tikatevu l'shana So friends, we're so happy that you got to join us today. I hope you enjoyed our videos, our songs, our shofar, our honey, our apples, our stories, our praying together, and we hope that you'll come back and spend some time with us again on Yom Kippur for our family service live stream. Shana Tova, may you be blessed with a sweet new year and inscribed in the book of life for good. Shana Tova.